And then I had been working on this George Carlin documentary. I started it right before the pandemic. Awesome. I let me tell you, I I didn't really I hate I'm embarrassed to say, but I really it's not that I wasn't a big George Carlin fan. I just wasn't educated on him. And this boy, is this an education of George Carlin, the influence he had, who he was, the hardships he went through when he hit rock bottom and like other comedians were sort of making fun of him at a certain time, you know, when he was doing blow and his wife was an alcoholic and his daughter stuck in the middle of all of this shit. I was like, this is intense as hell. And I really learned a lot. I love this document. When does when it come out? Uh, it's going to come out mid to late May, and I'm really proud of it. In the beginning, I thought, I don't know how we could do something as good as the Gary Shandling documentary, because Gary was so open about his feelings. He really expressed himself right. in every situation. He just he was just cutting a vein everywhere. That's what he was looking for. He was looking for the answers, right? Yeah, and he wanted to tell you what he was feeling, and he wanted to go deep, and he wanted to talk about going deep. So when you would look up interviews that he did with people like Kevin Smith or Mark Maron. It was all there. I mean, there was a great line Gary had in one of the interviews. I think it was with Mark Maron. It might've been Kevin Smith. He said, life is short, but not short enough. <laughs> <laughs> and so there was all this stuff. And I thought, well, George Carlin never told us anything about himself. Was it just a period? Was it the sense of like just the, the time period that he sort of grew up in? And Probably. I mean, it was an era where we didn't know that much about Alan King's life right. and people from that era. Yeah. And his act, none of it was personal. Zero. He didn't tell you about his wife and his daughter. And he he it was all in his mind and his observations of people and life. But it wasn't an observation of his behavior. Right. And then when he did interviews, he... He rarely went deep about any of it. But then we found that he was working on his autobiography uh, with Tony Hendra, uh, who played the manager in Spinal Tap, who was a <laughs> writer, and he passed away, I believe, this year. And he talked to Tony for this book for 23 hours, and we found these tapes. And you listen to when you make a documentary, how much harder is it to make a documentary than actually making a film? Because you have a script, you follow the script, you, you know, but with a documentary, it's sort of like the research that goes into it to find all these things and then piece them together and make it somewhat linear. Mm -hmm. How long do you have a team of people helping you out with this? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's a lot of work to to just listen to his 14 HBO specials. You listen to every special. I mean... I can't say I listen to every second of every special. I, I usually use my team to go, let's prioritize. There's a lot of stuff that isn't as good as the best stuff. Right. And so we don't have to, you know, get super deep on the things that weren't working, but it becomes clear that if there's 14 hours of stuff, maybe there's four incredible hours that we have to really pay attention to. Right. 